Hi everyone, and welcome back to a nightly title cycles video. So this time, um, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure why I tend to say at the end of video what I'll do next time, because by the time it's the next evening, I've already had like five other ideas and, you know, I'm, I'm just itching to try something else. So this time we're going to be doing the squeeze function and kind of messing around with that, talking about what it does, how to use it, maybe try and come up with some interesting tricks with it. And uh, so there'll probably be a bit of talking as I uh, explain a few ideas in my head and we try some stuff. And uh, then after that, uh, maybe we'll mess around a little bit. And then, um, but, and I will say this is tomorrow, I will actually be doing the stitch and sew functions because I have a reason why I need to do that tomorrow and want to do that tomorrow. Okay. So to start, what's the squeeze function? Well, it's uh let's copy over the type signature down from the bottom so it's maybe a little more legible. And it's so it takes a pattern of ints and a list of patterns and then creates a, a pattern out of it. So if you remember, if you watched the video um, last, I think this time last week, right? And I was doing some stuff with uh, turn, taking the Lindenmeyer strings and then turning them into patterns. I kind of took the, the numbers and used them almost like a, um, you know, a place to drop in other patterns. Well, so the squeeze kind of does that for you, except that it's not doing it out of like some giant strain. It's doing it with a pattern of, um, it's doing it with a pattern of integers, which means that you can do like more things with that. So to start, um, you know, if we have something like, here, here's something I was, I was playing with earlier. Uh, so basically you can, um, you can pattern, you can uh, uh, you know, write the pattern string of integers the way you normally would, and basically it just indexes into the list of other patterns. So here we're using a pattern of, of sounds, right? And can hear that what it's doing I mean it's it's you know it's playing this string I mean it's playing this set of sounds twice and then it'll do the glitch times four either two times or four times and um, you know you can you can do all the sort of normal stuff you would do with it And that's, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? But there's definitely more we can, uh, we can do with just this. So here's a slightly more complicated example I was messing with, because I was thinking about the fact that, well, so with this pattern of, um, you know, you can, it's just pattern of integers, right? Which means you can do all sorts of things. You can do off, you can uh, do, you know, struct, you can combine it with, you know, and so here, like, I won't say this is like brilliant sounding, but this, this is kind of fun. So what it's doing there is the basic integer pattern is you start with is just four, um, four zeros, right? Which is just going to be the bass drum and then the alternating clap and snare. But we've put an offset, and what the offset does is that it it alternately um, 
puts the, the offset beat at plus one or plus two, which means it'll be selecting one of, one of these. Now, and then, you know, every, um, you know, every, every, yeah, with the, the wind mod says that, you know, out of, out of 20 cycles, the last couple um, are going to use struct to uh, play the, uh, the first half, you know, 20 times and the, the uh, second half 10 times. And so you get the, the really, that's when you get the fast almost trill of it, right? So the, um, so yeah, you've got that, uh, So you, you've kind of got like basic things like that, right? And you can use it to do some pretty neat, um, neat patterning. But I was thinking one of the things that's kind of fun about it is that, so there's, there's Haskell as a language has this concept of, of partial application, right? And what partial application does is that you can give a function just one argument. And so here we were doing a, and that gives a, you know, function that takes multiple arguments. You can give one argument, you get a function that takes the rest of the arguments. So uh, for example, so let's talk about what the, the type of, you know, this squeeze P is. Oh, that, that didn't sound good, but we'll, we'll move on and we will rise above the squeeze P. And then, so what we have here is that this partial application gives us a thing that takes a list of patterns and returns a pattern. Well, that seems neat. Uh, and so what we can do here is let, let's use it to try and generate a, a melody pattern and, a, um, and do our, uh, our bead at the same time. So here I just did this, I create a variable that used this partial application on a, on a list of uh, chords. And so then you know, that will, that can be used and then we slow it down here, feed it to the end function. And then sure enough, we'll get a, oh, and I degraded so that it's, um, cuts out, cuts out. And then you can use the exact same thing and then pass it a list of a list of sounds to use and then we can have that as the beat. So I want to talk about one thing that's kind of funny about this. Now you'll notice you weren't really hearing the glitch, right? You're hearing the you're hearing the the bass drum and the clap. So why is that? Where why wasn't this showing up? Well, because so this is actually one of the things I think is kind of cool because this lets you be a little funky with say adding patterns together and not having to worry that's going to break something. Is that this much like the way when you're selecting samples out of a family of samples with the end function, it will actually loop back around. So the reason why uh, the glitch, it would be have an index of two and well, we don't have anything, we, we don't use an index of two in here. Um, we use zero, three, one, and four. Okay, and the reason why uh, you hear the bass drum and clap, well, every time it goes to three, well, that's going to wrap around to the bass drum. Every time when you hear four, it'll be the clap. Again, phrasing. Um, and so, like, what we, what we have here is a, so we have like a, a kind of a cute way to, to build, build patterns out of pieces. And, you know, we, we can 
you know, combining that with some some of the ideas here, right? Like you can you can use offset and you can use um, other things that restructure patterns and in order to build something more complex. So I just think that's kind of a it's kind of a neat function that way. And um, I was going to at this point maybe what I'll do is kind of just play around see if I can come up with some neat things and you know turn off the microphone for a little bit Oh, I suppose one thing that I should say quick is that uh, the function pick f is it's squeeze, but for lists of functions instead. So that's that's really the only difference between them. And we'll go ahead and try and use both.
is kind of weird, but I like to think it actually, you know, showed that we could at least try getting some weird noisy music out of, um, out of using squeeze and pick with like a common pattern. Um, I actually find the idea of using degrade inside of the pattern you hand to, to squeeze uh, kind of a neat idea. I kind of want to play around with that a little more, I think. Maybe with a, a less convoluted shape to begin with, like, um, hmm.
ます。All right, so um, that was kind of fun. I don't know if that, that counts as like full-on banger territory, but um, it was kind of neat. Uh, kind of had some good unpredictable rhythms, some interesting uh, intersections of uh, like uh, what uh, Alex always calls pattern interference, right? Like how when you combine structure together, doing interesting things. And so like taking the two squeezes and um, you know, adding them together all allowed for some kind of like fun rhythms and stuff and yeah that was and it was just off of this like super simple pattern we were using with the squeeze uh, every four to grade and then just cycling zero through four with the you know, polymeter of eight um yeah that's that was kind of fun so yeah um i hope uh if you watch this, this was either educational or entertaining, uh, inclusive or there. And um, tomorrow we will do uh, sew and stitch, which are sort of, they're, they're have to do with, um, they're almost similar to, to this in terms of combining sets of patterns together, but they involve like patterns of, um, uh, they basically involve like, like Boolean patterns, right? Um, and so that should be that should be kind of fun probably mess around with like doing that with binary and seeing what kind of beats we can do um see if it can you know what we can do for like fading and effects in and out and stuff anyway should be cool so um you know hopefully i uh you know, you're you you want you join me in the next video and uh until then uh take care <laughs>